Have you ever psyched yourself out of doing something or doing a project or even approaching it so much that you just kind of put it off for a little while? Well, that has kind of been the story of all of the green space and building that out in the middle of the downtown area. But that was specifically a story that was kind of playing in the back of my mind for today's lot build. And I'll share more upon how I was really able to push through that in today's speed build. Now, for those of you just joining me and just kind of getting to know my corner of the internet, my name is Michael and I want to welcome you to Sovereign Gaming in Life Sims, the YouTube channel where I build worlds, lots, and share my thoughts on video games in the life simulation gaming space. And today we are indeed continuing the build out of my custom Sims 3 SimCity world and we are back. Uh, <laughs> really uh, just trying to build these uh, green space lots in the middle of the downtown core one lot at a time and today's build is one like I was really more excited about the idea of it than I was on the actual execution because I wasn't too sure if I was going to be able to pull it off um, having done the open pit metro followed by the fountain park i suppose and the crumple bottom uh tea house like they were all fairly like complicated builds like if you count bridges as being complicated i personally don't i actually think that building bridges is easy which is why the uh the park the fountain park felt uh kind of easier to me but the crumple bottom tea house was one that had a lot more moving pieces to it it just you know, wedding venues are not exactly my wheelhouse, and <laughs> I know I keep saying that in every episode, and I'm sure that you're wondering what is in Michael's wheelhouse. Well, I don't even know at this point, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest. But, um... But yeah, the Crumple Bottom Tea House was one that was a little more complicated. It took a lot of effort for me to actually finish that one. Like it took a lot longer than it should have. And the episode length for that will definitely reflect that. But today it's kind of like I got the opposite story from the Crumple Bottom Tea House when I went to build the amphitheater. So the amphitheater build was one that was really important to me. I wanted to bring like a new functionality to the green space that we had in the middle of the downtown core and theoretically I could have you know fit in all of these functions into one 64 by 64 lot such as you know placing a live show venue um you know stage and also making sure that there was a wedding venue uh set up and try to like cram it all into one 64 by 64 lot and there are plenty of creators out there that are extremely talented and are able to like uh fit in all of those recreational um recreational activities i suppose in one lot and make it look good for me i need the space to really like expand out and that was a big reason why i built the uh, sim city world in the create a world tool is so that i could actually give myself the lots and the space that i needed in order to achieve that and today is really no exception and um and i am in a, again in a 64 by 64 lot so i've actually got a lot of space to really sprawl out from and i feel like you know since i've been playing these 64 by 64 lots and building on them that i'm so used to them that i am really uh, gonna <laughs> struggle when it comes to even smaller lot sizes and you guys will see that in future builds I suppose or at least in the next build because that is definitely a change of pace there but anyways today I had decided to make this into an amphitheater like you know those amphitheaters that you see in parks like those modern ones that are kind of um, paying homage to like ancient amphitheaters of Greece and all that well, that was really the vision and uh, the inspiration that I had decided to use for today's build because I really love the idea of having a live show venue, having a place where Sims can kind of gather and watch different performances um, just in a public space that's uh, live and free and all of that. And I just wanted to like really give a true big event space into this collection of um of parkland lots that we've got just in the middle of the downtown core. 
And so I figured that an amphitheater would be the perfect setting for it since it would be outdoors, Sims would have public access to it and they can just kind of stroll by, enjoy the shows and also kind of move on. Furthermore, it adds that functionality uh, from the Sims 3 Showtime um, in that it gives like another performing venue for those Showtime careers to actually engage with. A venue that I feel makes a lot of sense and I will continue to add a few more of the Showtime venues as we go on here. So um, we'll get to those builds as we um, as we come across them. But so far, I've really only built the one private venue lot, which is a higher tier of performance. And that was with the uh, Pink Flamingo Jazz Club that we did way back in the Old Town episode. So if you want to check that out, you're more than welcome to. Well, the step below that is actually like live show venue lots, or I believe you either start out doing live show venue lots or it's like the step below it but anyways we were missing that kind of functionality in sim city and so i just wanted to like slot it in here just in a place where it makes sense what i specifically love about modern reinterpretations of amphitheater uh, performing spaces is that they always use like uh, they always tier their heights and all that and it always feels so natural and so smooth and so I really wanted to achieve that look of like clean lines and um, and making the drop down into the actual performing space seem and feel as smooth and as natural as I possibly could so my goal here was really just to use that natural environment to use a lot of the green texture that was already painted on here and just to like add to it and just make it look a little more interesting while also not out of place you would have seen towards the beginning of the episode where i was actually just experimenting with the different heights um with the stairs there Firstly, like that is like a really great way to determine like different levels is just placing and like clicking once on stair uh, on those uh, like a single set of stairs uh, just to determine what the next level down will read as. And then that way you don't get as much um, terrain tearing as you would if you were adjusting it to different heights. Kind of hard to explain um, without doing like a full tutorial on it, but I was using that kind of method to just kind of check how deep I could actually go before it started to flood. And in this case, like it was very unclear as to how deep it would go, but luckily I decided to just like keep the lowest level of the amphitheater very you know it, it's not very deep at all especially like when we compare to the uh open pit metro build that i did earlier so it was just like three clicks of a stair and i liked that height and i felt that i could blend it in naturally uh towards the back as well from the theater because that was something that i felt was very important like with all of the um all of the surrounding lots, uh, with all of the lots really in the uh, green in the downtown green space, I want them to all interconnect with each other and to make it seem like you could walk from one lot directly to another without having to take to the street. Which of course like goes against with the way that the Sims uh, naturally pad themselves because I, I don't think that Sims really just cross from one lot directly into another unless you like force them to do that, but hey. Um, I've seen stranger things happen in The Sims, but I still wanted to like give that illusion that Sims could theoretically just go directly from the amphitheater lot to the um, to the what other lots do we got to the Fountain Park lot? <laughs> oh boy. So yeah, that was the illusion that I was trying to uh, give here. I feel like I was able to achieve it, especially towards the end of it. But yeah. Um, amphitheaters all play with like some sort of levels and I really wanted mine to have a sunken level so that as you approach the park you can actually see um, the performance that's just happening below. I wanted it to be accessible just in case like this is more so like designing for city behaviors but just in case like there is a large crowd that decides to gather around for uh to watch performances that are happening on the stage because it is sunken down and because the people standing in the back will be at a higher elevation they'll be able to see more so a little bit of like arena designing i suppose uh went into it which is exactly what amphitheaters are all about 
So yeah, I decided to make it sunken as opposed to raised because of that reason, and it also looked a little more interesting to me anyways, so I really wanted to kind of give that look and feel there for the amphitheater itself. And like I've done with all of my lots, this is play tested. I play test all of my lots and um, sorry to repeat myself, but yeah, <laughs> I do that. And when I was play testing with this slot at the end of it, the proprietor indeed decided to spawn and I was able to have a sim do a performance on stage. So luckily it all functions perfectly well um, from my from my testing just based on that. So I was very happy with the way that kind of um, the way that kind of played out. So yeah, speaking of performances and like Showtime careers and all that, I feel like there is quite a wide variety of, there is simply a wide variety of different lot classifications to spawn jobs. I know I spoke about private events, but there's also, or sorry, private venues, but there's also, um, there's also like large venues, which I've, there's only one in SimCity being the stadium that I literally copied and pasted from Starlight Shores, which is from the Showtime expansion pack. But then there was also, um, there's also the live show venues, which is what we're building now, which is a lower tier of performance. And then lastly, I believe there's one last lot classification called coffee houses, which is again, I think that first, um, that first tier of performance uh, jobs that are available to you. I'll have to double check on that. I'm not too sure if that's entirely accurate because I also remember vividly having Sims be able to do live show venues as well. So who knows? But I just kind of wanted to uh, recap on that just because I feel like there's a lot of flexibility with different concepts we could play with in terms of what each of those venues really read as and in this case because i know that this is more of a public performance space that having it as a live show venue as opposed to a private venue makes sense plus like the name in it itself makes <laughs> makes a lot more sense because it would make no sense to call this a private venue in any way shape or form so yeah um so yeah i created this lot for that purpose i also felt that having like a big event space as opposed to like a private event space that we had with the crumple bottom tea house helped to balance out the different functions that one could have within this conglomeration of green space lots within the downtown course so i really wanted to offer that kind of gameplay here to me it made sense uh from a principal standard uh from a principal standpoint there and um and yeah i really enjoy the balance that this lot actually brings to the area and uh the different tiering and the different levels to it really help to add a certain level of di uh it, it certainly helps to make the green space feel a lot more dynamic as a piece of the puzzle to the bigger picture here and yeah Finally, now that I'm actually at this lot, I'm sure that you guys are able to see like the bigger vision that I had for the green space lots in this downtown core area. At first, when I was designing the amphitheater, I was actually going to give it a stone base, like with the stone stairs and all that. But then, you know, as I started experimenting a little bit with the actual design itself, I actually began to change my mind and I wanted to make it more of a wood base as I felt it would be a little more natural uh, setting within the environment. Sure, the collection of green lots within the SimCity downtown core take a lot of inspiration from classical architecture, kind of like you're rediscovering ruins and um, and like repurposing them, such as what we did with the open pit metro. And I got some plans to like continue on with those themes with the next uh, the next builds when we finish out the uh, green space designs here. But for this one, I really wanted it to be a modern reinterpretation of an amphitheater. And I felt that I had a little more flexibility. I didn't feel so confined to using specific stone textures or anything of the sort. And so I decided to actually switch over from like stone stairs and all of that and like the stone wallpapers into something that was more of a wood base. And the wood that I found was actually something that kind of surprised me as well because I never actually used that particular wood pattern. And a big reason why I never used it is because it was in such an ugly orange color that I never really um, appreciated the 
geometry or the form of it. So um, that's something that I continue to discover with The Sims 3 is that there are certain patterns that I never ended up using because I think it actually looks ugly. But when you recolor it and when you actually adjust it, it does um, look really nice. So I ended up actually saving the pattern because I liked it so much and I know I'm going to be using it for future builds and such. But for now, I really wanted to um, to use it for the amphitheater because it helped to make it integrate with the environment better as opposed to it just being like a bunch of like stone is very hard and I really wanted to soften it up. <laughs> I don't think that really made a whole lot of sense, but I did want to soften up like certain edges and certain angles and all that. And so that was really a big goal of mine uh, going forward with the amphitheater designs was just to make it look as naturally integrated within its environment as it does. And for that reason, I did end up painting the sidewalk into the amphitheater leading down to it into the performance space and all that because i really wanted it to look like that natural extension from the street sure if i was using like an ancient uh, amphitheater as inspiration which i wasn't i probably would have changed the paths to a different uh, stone or to like a cobblestone or something but because I was making this more of a modern reinterpretation of an amphitheater, I decided to just get it to match the sidewalk so that it would just match the surrounding lots and also the street much better. And I'm really glad that I went with that decision in of itself. Another design choice that I had decided to make when creating this amphitheater is I really wanted it to feel as open air and as open uh, and to have as open, much open space as possible. With the SimCity Central Park build and with the Crumple Bottom Tea House, there's a lot of flora and fa well, a lot of vegetation, a lot of flowers, a lot of bushes. It's those both of those lots are very manicured in a way, whereas with this one, I really wanted it to be open and for the people. And so I decided not to use a whole lot of bushes or flowers or trees just in like certain targeted areas. I wanted to have like certain frontages and all that. But overall, like I tried to be minimal with the amount of vegetation and all that that was um, that was uh, placed in this lot. And so I feel like it was a really good direction that I took with that. Of course, like by the end of the episode, you'll see me place a bunch of spawners here and there. So it's not like these fields are, it's not like any of the green grass is like not going to have anything on it per se, but it is just going to be a lot more of a blank canvas and just like enjoying, um, I guess the term is white space in terms of, yeah, just allowing the space to just kind of speak for itself. Um, and then with the spawners that I do end up placing towards the end of the lot uh, build here, it is something that helps to make it come alive and to, again, give more purpose to the lot than just for performances and for those sims that are in the Showtime careers. Overall, loving the way that this looked in terms of the different color palettes that I was using and the different ways that I was designing the paths. Um, I, to me, it feels very much like the amphitheater that I was going for. And, um, and yeah, I really enjoyed how it all turned out. When it comes to the stage, I did struggle a little bit with the roof and with the massing. Um, a problem with the stage is actually the fact that I built it diagonally on the grid and um, that made me run into a couple of problems and you'll see it on screen where I'm actually trying to make another round roof like I did with these um, with the Blue Water Village school build that I did um, a few episodes back and so I wanted to try and replicate that here but because I built it uh, diagonally against the grid it doesn't like to play nice so I had to give up on that vision quite quickly but what I did end up doing is I ended up making it just like a flat roof um, and I added in a couple of those into the future glass floor carpets which are just the best <laughs> they really are the best if I'm gonna be um, if I'm gonna be frank with you guys here I I've probably overused them already you guys have seen me use them in so many builds at this point that um, it, they're likely a set of uh, carpets that I will continue to use throughout so um, 
So yeah, uh, they kind of came to just make the roof just slightly more interesting because otherwise it was just looking like a flat roof and I really wasn't uh, too happy with the way that it had turned out. And of course, if it isn't showing on screen, it will show on screen eventually. My biggest saving grace for this amphitheater build was actually just keeping it as simple as possible. And I, I didn't honestly need to overthink it too much. I just needed to put in some levels and put in the stairs, have those balanced out as best as I can, and then just kind of keep it moving from there. So yeah, keeping it simple really helped to just kind of make this build just sort of flow. I finished this build so much quicker than I did with the Crumple Bottom Tea House because with the Crumple Bottom Tea House, I kept getting stuck at certain points and I had to walk away from it. Whereas this one, this was just like one, um, this is either one gaming session or two gaming sessions. Like it just kind of came together quite quickly after I had um, adjusted the levels in the beginning there. So that was certainly uh, something that I was very happy with. I was very happy to kind of get back into the flow because if I'm going to be honest, like when I was making the trailer for the SimCity World Drop, speaking of which, you can download it. The download link is in the description and all that. But yeah, when I was making the trailer for it, I like it interrupted my flow and it just was really hard for me to just kind of get back into building again in The Sims. And I yeah, that Crumple Bottom Tea House was really a struggle for me to just get through. <laughs> so I mentioned it in the ep in that last episode that I spent way too much time there when I should have just been flowing through it like it wasn't it's not a complicated lot when I um, look back on it and this lot is also not complicated at all so I'm really thankful that you know by returning to like simple clean lines and to simple concepts that I was able to effectively build something that I think is very um, very well serving of the area it does what it needs to do and it fits in just perfectly in my opinion um speaking of like clean lines and all that and like keeping the vegetation minimal where i could and just giving it that open space feel i also wanted to keep the sky very clear <laughs> above it like i really didn't want any kind of shadows um overarching there and that includes like uh shadows from lampposts and all that so the lamppost was very I, I put them on the outskirts to the other uh, sidewalk paths that just kind of connected to the other lots within the downtown green space. But other than that, I really didn't care for placing in a bunch of lampposts this go around. I do understand the importance of needing to like keep an area like this very well lit at night, which is why I ended up using those uh, circular floor lights. I felt that that just suited the amphitheater build better it makes it more interesting and uh and it also like keeps the area clear of any shadows because that was one thing i really didn't care for is any kind of shadows in this particular build so so yeah uh i think it all kind of worked out like uh worked out for the best and this is actually kind of the perfect lot to like take shadow um yeah shadows into consideration because it isn't surround well there isn't an immediate high-rise building next to it is what I'm trying to say. Like I'm sure like from the tunnels it'll like cast some sort of a shadow but not so much. Um, you'll see in the next build actually that shadows are certainly more predominant but with the next uh, couple of builds for, um, for the green space like the shadows almost don't even matter at that point. And you guys will see why as well. And yes, uh, for the remaining two lots within the downtown green space, it is consolidated into one episode just because I I guess this amphitheater build really got me into the building flow. And so I, you know, flew through this build, it felt. And then I also flew through the next couple of builds. Um, and yeah, you'll see why as well, because one of them is definitely simple. <laughs> I might have to go back and edit that one. Anyways, for the amphitheater build, uh, at the back of the stage, I really didn't care to give a backstage area, like where you can get ready and get your equipment set up and all that. And a big reason why I decided not to do that is because I felt like I, I felt 
I know that. <laughs> I know and felt that. Let me try that. I know and felt that with the pedestrian traffic that would come in from all angles to this lot, that it also had to still be relatively um, accessible from that end as well. And I did design this lot with the idea that I would smooth out the hill from the back so that you know, if you wanted to, you could walk downhill into the amphitheater and that it was accessible from that end as well. And so I decided that, um, yeah, I decided that that was the direction that I wanted to take with it. And um, the hill behind it was very much smoothed out as much as I possibly could. And again, I'm very thankful that I only went like three stairs deep into the ground because um, otherwise that probably wouldn't have looked as, um, looked as good. <laughs> the foundation that just kind of surrounds the amphitheater, uh, seating area is, you know, it, it's the focal point of the lot build that just kind of shows that there is a difference, um, like it just gives it a little more structure into it, which is something that I was intending on, but I also didn't want that structure to... Feel like it was blocking people off from accessing the amphitheater from all angles from all sorts of places in sim city so um so yeah and that was that has been like a huge consideration throughout all of these downtown green um green space builds is that everything is accessible from every angle starting with that open pit metro station and then moving into the uh central park fountain uh area a uh, lot and then like even crumple bottom even the crumple bottom tea house is accessible theoretically from all angles that it attaches to and from all lots it attaches to so the hill was very important for that and i also imagine as well that kids would like to like roll down the hill or whatnot and just kind of feel a little more freeing a little more yeah just adding in that open space that i just feel that the other green space lots don't really offer sims and yeah very happy with the way that this all turned out in terms of its form and its function. The only unfortunate part of the build, in my opinion, is really the green space between the different levels of the amphitheater because it's really not interactive in any kind of way. I mean, I guess it's kind of why I put a bunch of spawners in there, but you know, I'm not too sure how realistic that is. In reality, like an amphitheater that's built like this, these modern reinterpretations, that green space in between each of the levels would really be used as seating, like informal seating, or maybe even formal seating, like if you hosted an event and put in a bunch of like fold out chairs or whatnot. But, but hey, that's not the way that The Sims 3 functions. And so I decided to just kind of leave it blank just as that piece of set dressing that's just there uh, for players. When it came to actually setting up the actual uh, showtime stage and placing in that little invisible square, I suppose, where Sims can kind of uh, watch the show, I did decide to just place that um, that square in front of the stage just so that Sims are standing watching the show and kind of gathering like a real crowd setting when those shows actually are, um, are live and all that. So, so yeah. Um, it's some, it's just like the reality of the game that I just have to deal with. On the other hand though, like just to kind of add a little more urban gameplay and a little more urban streetscaping, I decided to, in the northwest corner of the lot, just kind of add in a little area for a food truck and also some seating and chairs. I think up until this point, I have been very modest in terms of where I'm adding the food truck and whatnot. Like specifically in Old Town, it's only in like a couple of lots. And then it just so happens that with the government uh, campus neighborhood and now with this neighborhood, that the lots that I'm building up until this point really haven't had space for a food truck that I ever intended them to have. And so, yeah, today, um, in the amphitheater, I thought it was absolutely important, <laughs> very important to have the food truck and to just give them a little seating area as well. So um, this again is suggesting that there isn't a whole lot of like, you're not supposed to be bringing your food and drink into the amphitheater. But then again, like you can't really stop people from doing that. But hey, 
there's a seating area for your food and drink and there's actually a spot for the food truck as well speaking of which the food truck is a mod that i have downloaded it i have added it into my list of downloads that i use that's outside of the sims 3 store um the only other download that i really use is a chandelier and and i guess the food truck the food truck is actually like a mod and i highly recommend it because it works it works well for me it works almost perfectly <laughs> sometimes like i run into like some small issues with it but i just have to like reset or delete it or what or delete the uh truck in uh, using testing cheats and it true or whatnot but it works perfectly um it works perfectly <laughs> i love the food truck so much and yeah i am very happy with the way that area turned out it just kind of brings in that urban form that i am always looking for when it comes to uh when it comes to these urban builds here and the food truck will continue to make more appearances as well um it's just that it has to be um yeah it just has to uh it just has to be sporadic throughout the downtown core otherwise i'm gonna end up placing a food truck on every lot and it's yeah, so like I've strategically got them littered throughout the entire build here. I think that the other one nearest to this one is at the Open Pit Metro Station, if I remember correctly, and I am certain that I do. Um, so yeah, Food Truck is going to make more appearances elsewhere, but I am trying to balance it as best as I can. As we come to the end of the episode, I just want to explain a few things on what's next here. So. We are continuing the downtown neighborhood build out. Um, I've got the downtown, midtown, and uptown neighborhoods uh, kind of lined up here, as well as the far east neighborhood as well. Um, those are all next uh, to be built after the downtown core. But once I do finish up the downtown uh, neighborhood here, um, what I'll do is I will be uploading all of those downtown lots in the Sims File Share Net uh, website. I always get the name wrong, so I do apologize, but I will be uploading those files there as uh, Sims 3 pack files for you guys to download once I've got all those um, lots prepared and edited and all that. I typically like to watch all of my episodes before I go in and make edits, so I will probably be doing that in the relative near future here. However, um, I just wanted to mention that the next episode we are going to do something that is, I guess, outside of my wheelhouse. Again, I don't know what it's exactly in my wheelhouse when it comes to building lots and stuff, but the next pair of lots because I was able to consolidate it into one episode that I will be building actually has to do with cats and dogs. I'm not someone that plays with The Sims pets. I've never really been big on pets, even from The Sims 1. So, you know, to finish off the downtown green space core um, with some pet lots, I feel was very, um, very necessary in a way because people own cats and people own dogs. And oddly enough, in The Sims 3, they offer us lot classifications that include cat jungles for whatever reason and dog parks, which make more sense. <laughs> but hey, um, we are going to explore that in the next episode. And I'm very excited to actually show you you guys uh what it all comes out to be because it does touch upon some of those uh classic architecture themes that i have explained a little earlier and that's all i will tease for that because there is quite a bit to uh to share with you from there going forward all right so yeah that pretty much does it for today's episode if you have enjoyed this episode and if you've been enjoying this build out series then feel free to like this video and consider subscribing if you haven't already and of course like um if you have any suggestions feel free to drop those comments like as soon as i uh, get these episodes uploaded and publicized and all that and you know before I finish up with any kind of edits before I move on to another neighborhood I always like to review my episodes and uh, review the comments as well so if you've got a suggestion for something feel free to drop it in the comment section I always do appreciate it and I definitely read them anyways thank you so much for watching and I hope you have yourself a wonderful day